Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to talk about this great puzzle of human history. The puzzle of agriculture. What exactly happened in human history approximately 12,000 years ago that essentially forced the human culture to transition from being hunter-gatherers to eventually becoming completely reliant on agriculture and husbandry. Despite the fact that for over 300,000 years we seem to have done fine just being hunter-gatherers and going from one location to another. Humanity survived perfectly well by being nomadic and lived by finding food, not manufacturing it. And so something incredible must have happened 12,000 years ago in order for all of these different human societies to suddenly adopt this new lifestyle. And so here across different parts of the globe, humans stopped moving and started farming. And farming quite a lot of different stuff. And though today we live in a world that's essentially defined by food, but I guess most of it comes from a grocery store for us, here it's worth pausing for a second and asking this fundamental question. Why was the agriculture invented? And so in this video we're going to focus on some of these studies in the last few years based on this concept of Neolithic Revolution that essentially transitioned a lot of human societies across the planet from very nomadic lifestyles to prominent settlements and prominent agricultural communities. Which as you probably know from history books eventually became the foundation for pretty much most of the modern civilizations. For example in the west it all started with Sumerian civilizations and in the East it started with something else we're going to be discussing in a few minutes. But really the question is, why? Farming is a lot of work. Whereas being a hunter-gatherer, despite being a little bit risky, is actually a lot easier. It allows for a lot of leisure time and is technically quite time efficient. And so this is something that a lot of scientists and especially anthropologists have been puzzling over for many many decades. And technically even today there is no exact answer. For example, was this all about some kind of a reliable food source or did all of this start with some kind of a religious significance? Possibly because many of these sites are also associated with burial grounds. Or, as this new research explores, was this actually because of something entirely different and way more fun? Something that we're only starting to understand now because of some of this recent research, especially based on the discoveries from the Middle East and China, and something that points at alcohol, or technically beer. Was all of this because of beer? Which if correct would actually make things so much more bizarre but also so much more exciting. And so today we're briefly going to discuss the overall timeline of agriculture in human society, but specifically focus on some of this recent research you can find in the description that suggests that the overall desire for ancient bread or perhaps ancient beer might have been the crucial spark that launched the modern civilization. While also briefly tackling another study that actually discovers how different types of agriculture resulted in completely different types of cultures. But I guess the first important fact here is that this did not actually start in one single place. And here several sources confirm that agriculture emerged independently in at least 11 separate regions in the old and in the new world. And you can see some of them in this image right here. And we obviously have a lot of archaeological evidence from a lot of these regions, essentially showing us how different cultures seem to have independently adopted various techniques in order to create this completely new lifestyle. But the earliest and the most commonly studied origin point is of course in the Middle East and specifically in the Levant region also sometimes referred to as the Near East. And here the transition to settled life started relatively early, around 9500 BC, so almost 12,000 years ago. And so people living here cultivated eight so-called Neolithic founder crops. So for example flax, peas, barley, wheat and lentils, and of course chickpeas. Something that's cultivated in this region even today. And well, not so long afterwards, animal domestication followed as well. First it started with pigs approximately 11,000 years ago, followed by sheep and other cattle. But agriculture also flourished in other regions, including Mesoamerica and China. And in China, rice domestication potentially happened approximately 8,000 years ago in 6200 BC. Whereas in Mesoamerica, and especially modern southern Mexico, here it was all about maize, also known as corn. This very likely started approximately 10,000 years ago in 6700 BC. Although surprisingly in some of the southern regions in South America near the Andes, potato cultivation potentially started at least 2,000 years prior. And so in every single case here, 
introduction of agriculture followed intensification of production that eventually supported the formation of some of the first great city civilizations. For example, in Mesopotamia, irrigation canals collected water from Tigris and Euphrates rivers, allowing Sumerian farmers to grow massive quantities of barley and wheat, which was required to support these first large cities. Now, in this case, it's kind of difficult to cover all of the regions and individual histories of those regions, but it seems to have happened pretty quickly in a lot of locations and produced a lot of societal complexity as a result. As a matter of fact, if you look at things like, for example, writing and even mathematics, all of it seems to have actually started as a result of counting crops and writing down exactly what kind of crops were being raised and who they were sold to. And so some of these super early advances in agriculture laid the foundation for the entire modern civilization. But for decades, the standard theory here suggested that humans first started to do this to produce food, and specifically to produce things like bread by growing certain cereals, which were then grinded and baked. And though obviously there is quite a lot of evidence that this was indeed happening in many cultures, a lot of recent archaeological evidence and especially analysis of residue seem to have challenged this assumption, suggesting that it might have actually started as a desire for beer and not bread. Although, just to highlight, this is still a contentious hypothesis and not a lot of archaeologists agree with this, although some definitely do. And so the question is basically, was it alcohol or was it food? Why did humans start agriculture? And while the challenge for researchers is actually telling the difference between prehistoric bread and prehistoric beer, mostly because both involve grinding cereals and mixing them with water, leaving very similar starchy residues. Here's, for example, a bunch of rock mortars used to create beer that happened around Stone Age. But it took a lot of evidence to prove that it was actually beer that was produced here and not food. But we do have some really profound discoveries from the Middle East that actually do provide us with quite a lot of intriguing evidence. And a lot of it comes from what's known as the Natufian culture. A group of hunter-gatherers that actually became kind of semi-sedentary between approximately 15,000 and 11,500 years ago. So here we had the first known culture that started to use agricultural tools. And we know so because they left a bunch of grinding stones and mortars dating back to about 14,000 years. And so in this case, archaeologists did discover quite a lot of mixed evidence. For example, one of the sites contained a lot of burned food dating between 14,000 and 11,000 years ago, mostly made from a lot of wild cereals and certain types of roots, which suggested that this culture could indeed produce some kind of a bread-like product. Now remember, this is without farming and without agriculture. And so here they were able to do this by collecting seeds from individual plants. And here this production occurred at least 4,000 years prior, before formal agriculture started to happen around the planet. Except that this very likely involved a lot of effort. This was a high-cost production, which meant that this bread was probably some kind of a special occasion food. So here this was not staple food like it is today. But at the same time, by analyzing some of the other material from a burial site, archaeologists also discovered evidence for cereal-based beer brewing which seems to have happened between 11,700 and 13,700 years ago and was indicated by the presence of wheat, barley and certain other fibers, very likely used in brewing some kind of a porridge-like beer that was most likely used in rituals. Here this would involve these stone mortars you see in this image. And once again, in this case, the evidence for this brewing technique seems to predate the evidence for the domestication of various cereals such as barley and wheat by at least several thousand years. So this culture was already brewing something way before agriculture became commonplace. And by the way, if you actually want to find out more about this, the study should be in the description. But interestingly enough, something very similar was discovered in a completely different region and reported in a study you see right here by the researchers from China. Now this is one of the most recent studies, so the evidence in this case is definitely quite surprising. But basically, a similar ancient fermentation discovery seems to have been now also made in China. And in this case, it dates to about 10,000 to 9,000 years ago, from a location referred to as the Shangshan site. And so in this case, an analysis of microfossils revealed that rice, along with something else, possibly acorn nuts and lilies, was potentially used for brewing some kind of a fermented beverage. And unlike the bread-making technique, this unique method relied on something that's actually used in Asia even today. It relied on some kind of a mold and yeast mixture as a fermentation agent. 
So basically here there was a starter culture. And in Asia this is still widely used today for producing all kinds of rice wine. And so in this study scientists suggest that the warm and humid climate during the early Holocene was possibly very hospitable for a lot of this fungal growth and very likely led to some kind of a accidental fermentation that humans eventually started to replicate because it seemed to have produced something they all enjoyed. And so in this study we have chemical, microbiological and archaeological evidence suggesting that there was a lot of brewing going on and here they were definitely not making bread, they were making alcohol. And so the question is pretty obvious, what came first? the beer or the bread. Since both bread-like products and cereal-based beer seem to have appeared around the same time and definitely predates the domestication and agriculture by at least several thousand years, the new question becomes the question of motivation. Why did humans start to produce this? And so was this for nutritional advantage of processed grain or did alcohol have some kind of a social ritual importance and possibly played some kind of a critical role in helping those social cultures basically socialize? And that of course is a really intriguing question, but unfortunately based on the evidence right now there is no exact answer. There is evidence for both bread and beer and it's not clear what came first. But what is clear is that whatever was happening here was extremely important for those cultures because it was very, very intensive and required a lot of effort. And so quite a few studies suggest that there must have been some kind of a spiritual and religious requirement for all of this to have started. So maybe some kind of a burial ritual or celebration of some kind of a special event or a transition. So right now we don't really know, but the evidence is definitely exciting. But here I actually wanted to mention one more agricultural study that also presents us with a very different impact agriculture seems to have had on different societies and specifically on the influence of modern human culture and even psychology. And here this is a study from 2024 on the differences between farming rice and farming wheat. Because beyond securing food, the type of agriculture practiced apparently also shapes how entire societies think and how they end up interacting. So here I wanted to briefly mention what's referred to as the rice theory of culture. Okay, let me explain exactly what this is about and why this is also kind of important. Traditionally, paddy rice farming is incredibly labor-intensive and does require complex interdependent irrigation networks which are very different from typical wheat farming. And so because of these demands, many rice farming cultures, which are predominantly in Asia, historically became more collectivistic. So here the focus was on the group and the cooperation. Or at least when compared to other cultures, whose focus was on dry land crops such as for example wheat. But the question is how do you prove this? And while proving this theory is extremely difficult. And mostly because rice and wheat farming regions differ in so many different ways. There are just way too many factors involved. But turns out that there was an accidental natural experiment in China that resulted from somewhat bizarre policies in communist China in the 1960s, mostly because of the formation of so-called state farms. And so here Chinese government completely unintentionally created two separate state farms just 56 kilometers apart. One was only for rice and one was only for wheat. And in every other way these farms were nearly identical. The environment was pretty much the same, the temperature and precipitation was also the same, and all of the farmers were randomly assigned because that's usually how the communist countries do it. So people didn't choose to live here, they were assigned by the government. And this unusual setup basically rules out a lot of independent factors and creates a super strange experimental condition that nobody even knew was there up until this recent study. And so the results of this carefully controlled study have now been officially reported in 2024 in Nature magazine. And the overall results are kind of unexpected and somewhat unusual. First, when it comes to individualism, rice farmers generally showed much less meaning they emphasized themselves less compared to social networks, whereas the wheat farmers were very individual and preferred to rely on themselves. Second, there was a bizarre discovery in regards to loyalty and nepotism. Apparently rice farmers were discovered to be more loyal, but also a little bit nepotistic. They basically showed more favoritism toward a friend over a stranger, even when both acted identically. And lastly, rice farmers also showed a more holistic thought style focusing more on the relationship between items and context compared to a much more analytic thought style from the wheat farmers. Now just as a side note, all of this was of course based on individual questionnaires and by asking individual people from those regions a bunch of scenario-based questions. But the fact that the answers were so different is obviously really strange. 
Because here differences persisted even among farmers who hadn't farmed rice in a specific year and just people living in those regions, suggesting that the culture is maintained through accumulated experience and from various community norms as a result of agricultural practices. And so here these cultural norms formed in just a few decades and just because of the way that agriculture functioned. And so here the conclusion is that the act of farming rice seems to create cultures that are more collectivist compared to cultures that focus on other crops. But more importantly, this cultural change takes root in just one generation. It does not take that long. And right now this is an extremely strong evidence that agriculture doesn't just feed us and doesn't just produce alcohol, it fundamentally changes how we think and how we act socially. Which is honestly a really important discovery and why I wanted to mention it. And so what essentially started approximately 14,000 years ago as maybe some kind of a ritual or some kind of a religious experience has now dramatically changed how we think and how we do things and very likely created all of the complexity around us. So here the history of agriculture is a story of human ingenuity, but also of course human society as a whole. Without these early interactions and without the need for these interactions, none of this would be possible. And so for some reason, we mixed grains and water and possibly something else and it resulted in basically everything you see around you. Now obviously we still have no idea if it was because of food or alcohol, but right now both of these stories are pretty convincing. And more importantly, the crops we choose today continue to influence us and change our culture, dictating our deep-seated cultural traits like individualism and cooperation. And so the historical quest for some kind of a sweet fermented porridge may have been a key technological and social breakthrough, kind of comparable to I guess the wheel and fire. This right here built our civilization as we know it today. But once there are some additional discoveries, or once someone actually figures out if it was beer after all, we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below, maybe support the channel on Patreon, where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.